Hi everyone, this is Dallas Smith from Pea Vine Ridge Farms. Today is chick day, so we're getting our 300 broiler chicks from uh, Musat Farms, which is in Smithers. So I've had really good luck with them. They've been really good chicks. And today we're going to go over my brooder setup first, and then we'll uh, unbox the chicks in the second half of the video. As you can see, I got most things rather spread out so they don't ever bunch up. The heat lamps are fairly spread out. I got th uh, four heat lamps in here this year rather than the three of usual because of how cold it's been. And as you can see, my feed's all spread out. These uh, feed troughs are usually come with a little bit of a kind of a silo thing on top of it. But um, if you keep that on while they're chicks, the chicks will actually like eat until they're actually underneath the silo and then once the food becomes unstable, it'll actually come down on top of the chick and then the chick suffocates. It's not a nice thing to do to your poor chicks. So um, yeah, that's why there's no silos on top of these guys. And as you can see, the waters are nice evenly spaced out. There's one right by the heat lamp over there, so it'll keep her warm and stuff. Hopefully it gets warm enough, they don't spend most of their time underneath the heat lamps. That's not a good thing. You want it so that the chicks are just wandering around and sometimes stop by the heat lamps, but they're mostly just doing their chick things. <laughs> As you can see, um, if I had to change one thing about this brooder, is I would actually have a lower ceiling so that you know, I'm not heating up top with all the residual heat from all the heat lamps. and. Yeah, that's about it, I, what I'd change out of here. As you can see, the feed, um, I get it from Canadian Organic Feeds down in Chilliwack, and it's like really good feed. They always do really good on it. Uh, when the chicks get here, I'll be giving them some electrolytes I made at home. I'll be putting that in their waterers and dipping their beak in their water, then letting them go. That way they get a good boost after being shipped. So uh, here's part two. All right, hi everybody. We're gonna start unboxing the chicks. Here's the first box. Um, I'm gonna bring in the other two boxes so I can just empty out the chicks, throw the box outside, empty out more chicks, throw that box outside, and then do the last box. That way the, all the boxes are in here and they don't get a chill out there waiting in the car. So uh, hope you guys all enjoy. Box them. I'll take them down from here. Make sure I can get in the lid by twisting all the cardboard where it's supposed to be. I'll do one section at a time. I gotta close the door. Here's a little guy. And what you do is that you take them right out of the box, dip the beak in water so you know where the water is, and go right ahead and start drinking right away. The nice thing about this water is that it isn't deep enough to get the dowel down wet, so they always do really good with these waters, I find. At least the meat birds. I wouldn't go do it with like a smaller breed. Hopefully they're it's warm enough in here. I, it feels warm enough because it's really hot. <laughs> but um, if it's not warm enough, a lot of the times, They'll start huddling all around underneath the map, so we'll see about that. Hopefully none of them have a chill. If they are cut, they'll jump on my arm and don't hurt anybody. Yeah, they're liking the water. They'll find the food soon. Looking at these guys. The heat lamps will give the lighting a bit of a reddish tinge because 
apparently you're not supposed to use a white heat lamp when you're using big uh, chicks. As you can hear, they're really noisy. <laughs> like super noisy. I had to drive 45 minutes in town with them all tripping in the back. The guy who's delivering them delivered in a van and he had probably about 600 back, or more than that. A whole pile of them back there. They were probably all complaining the whole time he came down from Smithers, so I shouldn't complain too much. <laughs> So that's 25 birds because that's a quarter section of one of these boxes. Now we're on to the next quarter section, so here's 26. Looks like they're fighting the food. <laughs> That one's got it all to himself, but this way. They're not too thirsty, which is a good sign. That means they didn't spend a lot of time in that vehicle. I've had them from other places where they do just all gather around the water it's just drinking the whole time and everything else. It's like everything will get the whole layout figured out and they'll know what to do pretty quickly about where food is, where the best meat lamp spots are, what is food, because they haven't ate yet in their little lives. I think they just hatched this morning, which is pretty nice. So that's 50 chicks unloaded. That's what 50 looks like running around in here. Looks like a, a lot already, but there'll be more. Sorry, that was for the guy. You kind of get a rhythm to unloading them after a while. You get faster and faster. Helps when you have help blaster the right kind of help. Bill and Eva at this stage can like, do more harm than good. <laughs> Yeah, the breed they're Cornish Cross, but the uh, fun fact about Cornish Crosses is that almost every hatchery has like a different variety of Cornish Cross, and you'll have noticed like differences between hatchery to hatchery and bird body style. Either like, they'll have more breast meat or more leg meat. I find there's slightly differences and slightly difference in behavior. Like I find these guys from this hatchery to be a lot more. Like, like, <laughs> uh, rambunctious and energetic compared to other hatcheries I've got with them. So that's why I like them the most. I like birds that come out with like, really want to thrive and get into stuff and 
can even search for food and be more active when they're out on pasture. Legs are starting to get sore. <laughs> Well, that's about 75 birds, three quarters of the way through the, that box. Get all crowded out of this water, so I'm just for the moment. Oh, that one is All right, we're almost at 100 birds unloaded. There you guys go. That's it, that's 100 birds. I'll slowly stand up, just don't want to step on your six. Oh, who's ever seen this? The problem with standing up is they don't run to you. Because they're like, hmm? You know, them, right now, the biggest thing moving right now is the mummy, which is kind of nice. I should tie my shoes for the next few days. Yeah, I'll find one. After I unload, usually I build a little wall out of cardboard so they're not all right by the door. Avoids crushing injuries. <laughs> Alrighty guys. I'll slowly move back into the position. I wish I had a chair with you. Next time I'll bring a chair. <laughs>
and drink enough water to make the water bubble. That's impressive. So well, that's about 125 there, running around about. So we're getting there. So, we're almost at 150 loose. Just a little over 175 that we've seen here now. It's starting to look like a lot of birds.
Alrighty, everybody, you've got all 300 unloaded, and uh, this is probably going to be a fairly long video today. It's going to require quite a bit of editing, but it's done, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, let's give you a close-up of some of these guys, because I think you'll enjoy that. Yeah, pretty cute. Right for the camera. Yeah, look at you guys. Pretty cute. Super active. Oh, I don't know, he's pecking the camera. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.